Well, hello, everybody. Adam, the Ultimate Whovian here. And today, uh, yeah, welcome back to the Doctor Who 2020 series, where I just take a look at a bunch of Doctor Who media that came out in 2020, do a sort of reflection and review. Because, um, yeah, and I thought I'd say this, and also I'm, I'm here with Ben Lett from the Host Productions. Hello, everybody. <laughs> he's helping me guide my way through for the big finish because there, there's oh man I, I i felt like uh for for i think definitely for big finish and just in doctor in general we were overwhelmed with like content and i and i still i still feel like i'm gonna miss out like on a few Every things of like hit. single yeah it's a yeah. track to do <laughs> i know so yeah we're gonna try and get through as many releases as possible and reflect and uh just to have a good time with it really so yeah i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start with the main range pretty much the monthly uh adventures i've got i think um from start to finish i uh, i believe i've got this right so i'm gonna go dark universe the psychic circus subterfuge cry of the vultress scorched earth the lovecraft invasion time apart thin time slash mad quake the Flying Dutchman and Displaced, I want yeah, to say. That's that's two together. Both one and two of Shadow of the Daleks. Uh, Plight of the Pimpernel and The Grey Man of the Mountain. Uh, so, yeah. Um, were there any of those stories or uh, any other adventures that uh, were highlights for you, Ben? No, they're all awful. <laughs> 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 it's actually it's really and i knew this would happen and i really hate it because obviously the main range is ending in 2021 march 2021 and i knew that they would do it where the last year they would seem to put a load of effort into it and then by the very end you would kind of think oh i don't want it to end now i really don't and it's the, the thing with the range this year is there's always stories that you will either really really like or you'll think oh, that wasn't as good because it's catering to lots of different audiences. But this year, I do think that, and a very rare thing, because I've been reviewing them, I think, since 2016, each Doctor has actually had something to kind of home in on and go, you know what, that was a really good story for them. And I think that's Paul, um, not Paul even, um, Peter had a few good ones. Uh, Time Apart um, was quite strong as well as the uh, Thin Time, Mad Quirk, because obviously we had the Slovene in there, um, which was very good for a new series audience kind of story, and dealing with the kind of result of the last trilogy with a companion called Mark and the Cybermen, which is quite cool. The Sixth Doctor, there's naturally obviously been Lords that are brilliant for him, obviously. Um, in particular, highlights Scorched Earth and Plight of the Pimpernel. Um, those are both written by Chris Chapman, both lovely historical stories focused on character, um, excellently written with the Sixth Doctor, an equally Lovecraft invasion as well. Um, a really interesting experimental story covering a rather controversial writer. And then for the Seventh Doctor, um, which I'm, I've not put the review up yet but the grey man of the mountain very very strong and john conshaw does a very good job as the brigadier as well you kind of forget that it isn't the genuine character he gets that personality almost down to a t oh yeah i i've been very i've that was one i've been very tempted by the grey man of the mountain just to see how because um i quite liked I, I quite enjoyed battlefield as a tv story um and i quite i quite like that i mean you know those guys along with Bambera and um, Anselin, like you know what a team. Uh, so those three, I think that would be quite fun. And I think yeah, John Culture does great. There's I've only listened to one. Well, actually, one a bit of the I, I listened to uh, sort of highlights of my favorites. But the first full story I've listened to is Dark Universe because yeah. I feel like with that one, um, it had a childhood's end ace on it. And I suppose yeah. around that time, the season 26 box set was coming out, but also a child to Zen. So I almost thought it was going to be like the dawn of this kind of new era for Ace and um, TV spin-off. Mm. <laughs> but um, just because I, I think maybe that's where they were going. And it felt strange that all of that content was coming out around that similar time. So I thought I'll mm. have to give it a go. And I really like uh, Mark Bernard as the 11. Um, that I think he was great. And it acts as a I suppose almost prequel to Doom Coalition, which I did get uh, a while back. And they think they think it's nice because at the end, I think they've incorporated that because McCoy makes a cameo at the beginning of Doom Coalition and they've worked that scene into the end of that one. I thought all that was that, the way they tied that in and that way that story was done. Because he, 
Because I remember correctly, because it was right at the beginning of the year, McCoy always acts like a narrator during that story, doesn't he? Yeah, there's um from what I can remember, there's a lot of focus on, I think Ace, Ace in particular, basically yeah. that relationship between how their lives have changed. And to be honest, I was surprised because I thought that as soon as that release was out, I thought that was going to be it and they would announce a whole box set. And I've got a gut feeling that 2021 is going to be the year. I think that they're finally going to give Ace her own spin-off. And I think that that's yes. going to either be her own series or that's going to be the first box set for the new format that replaces the monthly range and episode or a series focused around seven with that older version of Ace. Mm, yeah, because reading at Childhood's End and watching that trailer they did for season 26, I went... There's a lot there's a lot of story potential and I think that is still I think it's still potentially getting further explored in other kind of uh ways really and I, I think obviously Sophie Aldridge is just absolutely up for for it anyway. I, I think she really likes this sort of new chapter in Ace's life being sort of explored. I think there was like a I went to the Curse of Fenric BFI screening and I think there was like uh Andrew Carmel's teasing is like it felt like kind of the end or a new beginning kind of thing. Because mm. like um because like yeah, that's the thing, I you know. I just want to see what I've listened to um, a bit of Shadow of the Daleks, the fifth doc. This is like the fifth doctor sort of, you know, joining the time war, which I suppose for many people, it's like a double edged sword. So people are like, yeah, you know, doing the time war. It's great. Do the John Hurt adventures. Yeah. Mm. Paul McGann series. That's fine. But then a lot of things are going to be in a time war. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a box set coming up that we're probably going to be discussing that has a classic companion or companions, you know, getting involved with that. Um, I'm actually quite curious to know what you think about the time war on Big Finish, especially this year. It's I do get where people are coming from, um, but the, what I really like with Big Finish is that what you'll find is that they do all of these series, however, unlike a number of things, like, say, the Eighth Doctor Adventures, they are purposely tailored to certain audiences. So, say, the War Master has a completely different production team to the likes of the Eighth Doctor Time War. I think that that's normally produced by um, the more regular Eighth Doctor classic directors, the likes of like Ken Bentley, David Richardson. Mm. And then the War Master is very modern. It's Scott Handcock. It's the similar lines to that of Torchwood, James Goss as well. Nice. Um, meaning that there's you can kind of cherry pick what you like. And I get when people say, oh, they're doing too much. And um, it's funny that you mentioned Shadow of the Daleks because for the first time in however long it's been, I still haven't actually finished those releases. Um, I've gone on to review the November and December, or the just December releases with the Sixth and Seventh Doctors, mm. but I've not gone back to do Shadow of the Daleks because there's just something about it that it's one of those releases where I went in needing to be won over because I must yes. admit at that point I was thinking, what is the purpose of this? It does definitely deal with, from what I've listened to so far, like nice timey wimey things showing how the time war can affect people on a much smaller scale because I think both of them use exactly the same cast. Right. But other than that, it's um it'll be interesting, but I've not finished it yet. <laughs> but the War Master is a definite like if you want the time war, go to mm. the War Master. Go to the War Master, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, totally. I I was gonna say, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something along. I was gonna say something like time war wise. Um, no, yeah, it's completely escaped me. But uh, yeah, it, it, I th oh, you know, actually, I do remember. Um, so, would you say there's there's quite a few sort of anthology releases like this year in terms of sort of um, like because there's like Shadow of the Dice, that's kind of like an you know, mm. merry stories. Um, uh the i think there's that seventh doctor one the flying dutchman and i think there was another like displaced then then the peter davidson one of the slovene as you mentioned so i suppose they've been doing quite a few of those in the monthly it's range been, this year i think they've been doing basically flinging stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks um because what is really lovely to see especially last year was we just and 2018 as well we just had so much, so much stuff. And um, I can remember reviewing a number of things from many different series, lots of random box sets here and there. But what is nice to see is now that they've had the new series license for quite a bulk of time, they seem to be chilling out a bit and yeah. they seem to be fleshing out certain series a bit more. Um, I mean, I really do like the uh, like the Slovene Fifth Doctor story and Displaced as well with the Seventh Doctor, because in particular, 
the um i think it is displaced actually because the flying dutchman's a boat story and then displaced is a much different episode seeing the seventh doctor ace and hex being trapped in a house right and um it's one of those stories where you kind of come out of the end of it and you're kind of just staring into space thinking wow that kind of happened it's um it's a bit of a grim one it's hard hitting but it's one of those stories that I imagine we're going to see a lot more of because it's only one hour long and the monthly range is ending. So it'll mean that we get more experimental stories, but I, w- I really will miss those two hour episodes as well because I think that those really do work in the cases of quite a number of stories that have been released this year, like The Plight of the Pimpernel, like The Grey Man and the Mountain as well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I suppose really, you know, whatever 2021 brings up i know it was there'll only be a few releases in the monthly range until i want to say march is the i think so end of the end of the beginning i was always gonna say beginning of the end because that's what i'm used to saying the 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 reverse titles man um like they get me because i feel like everyone is like um i think there was like the tortured one we were like just talking about it like off camera with like a kill to view and then i kind of want to say a view to kill but that is obviously a bond movie title so yeah um they do like the complex titles. I'll give them that. It's a pain in the arse sometimes when reviewing. Yeah. Oh, totally, totally. Uh, so, yeah, is there anything else you want to discuss main range-wise? Ooh, um, I think overall it's generally been strong, and I just look forward to see where the range goes next, and I think it'll be good in the future, because at the same time as getting the current monthly range, obviously quite a lot of the older ones are now going out of print. Um, I think that it's a really good opportunity to focus on those older ones at the minute as they start putting these sales on, getting rid of some of the earlier ones, because once they're gone, they will be gone other than download. So I do, mm-hmm. especially if episodes really stand out to you, then I recommend them. Like you like Battlefield, you mentioned. Um, so the Grey Man and the Mountain, I think, will be a very, very good one for you because there's a lot of parallels with that. Like Ace gets a female companion for the story. So it yeah. kind of mirrors that. And yeah. then for the Brigadier, obviously, as well. And kind of deals mm. with mysterious stuff that you're not quite sure, like how kind of Battlefield does as well, from what I can remember. Mm. And it's sort of the older Brigadier from Battlefield as well. So it's a quite a... You'll get, a, I'd say, you'd probably get a different performance to sort of culture because he's used to sort of doing, obviously, it for the third Doctor stuff. Um, mm. So I think it'd be quite, quite interesting to listen to that. You know, obviously, it's still the Brigadier, but it's obviously him uh, as he as he was more in that sort of the late eighties. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm I'm very intrigued, very intrigued. So for the for the next category, I've done the Eighth Doctor. Uh, I think for the Eighth Doctor, not only has he appeared in his own box set and his own stuff, he's like cameoed in other stuff. So I've got Susan's War, the first oh. Stranded box set, uh, Time War Four. Uh, I've put the um, the t- Time of Victorious trilogy. He kills me, kills me not. The enemy, my enemy, mutually, do- do- mutually assured destruction. And he does cameo in the War Master Hearts of Darkness. Or I say cameo, but like appear in rather. That's probably the right way to to put it. Um, but it's yeah, very halfy so- half the War Master. It's um, it's one of those box sets. Again, it was a really pain in the ass to review because when you're there, you sat down, you just want to say about the entire plot. And the War Master, the one that's just came out, is one of those box sets where you need to avoid 80% of talking about the story because there's just so much going on. And it's one of those box sets where it's a very rare occasion where you get halfway through and you think, I've missed so much. And then you go back again and then you need to listen to it again. It's one of those ones that really benefits from multiple listens. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm... I'm very curious about, and I think it's coming, I don't know, I forgot the release date for it, but the one with Joe and Nyssa coming out, mm. the, the sixth one, yeah. I forgot, I think it's, is it Killing Time or some, something like, uh, whatever, whatever the next one is, but it does feature the older Joe and Nyssa, which I think that's that will be quite interesting because both have, you know, relationships, you know, with the with the master in terms, you know, Joe's always sort of encountered it during her time with the Doctor and, you know, Mm. Uh, literally, the master took on Nissa's, the appearance of Nissa's father, Tremas, in Keeper of Traken. Uh So, you know, that would be quite interesting. And I, I think, actually, I'm very curious to know how they're going to do it, because I think I wanted to see more of sort of Nissa 
and the master, I suppose, in the TV series. But this would give probably give an opportunity to really delve deeper into that kind of relationship. Uh, but yeah, as for like the eighth Doctor stuff, Stranded was a great box set. Um, uh, it's set in 2020, uh, but obviously Earthbound likes all the first do third Doctor stuff, but done quite effectively. I think Paul McGann, I think the, the main cast really carried a series. Like, mm. I credit to them, uh, Paul McGann, um, the action, uh, Nicola Walker, um, and Hattie Moran. Moran. There we go. Um, you know, yeah, they're they're a great team, and you know, I think without that, you know, I think I couldn't really imagine any other team really carrying this kind of style. And of course, bias, but Tom Baker as the curator. Uh, I'm glad we're going to see possibly more of him in the second box set. Um, and yeah, I uh, they, they were quite like nice sort of ties as well to the Doctor Who world. You had a bit of Torchwood mm -hmm. in there with Andy, and can I? Well, I don't know if I should say it, but um, uh, Tanya, Tanya, Tanya. Yeah, uh, being tangled in, in that tortured web as well. I found that quite that quite that, that quite interesting. The box has been out for I say six months, so I could say I think Tanya, you know, has been involved with Torchwood. So, and you the, know, the artwork is very pretty as well. Mmm. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I like that. It's one of those. I think the best thing to come out of Stranded is from a production perspective the fact that people can actually buy it and enjoy it. Because before it was just Paul McGann had become completely inaccessible because in order to listen to the last Ravenous box set prior to that, you would have needed to listen to, I think it was over 24 hours of audio to fully understand it. I think it was even yes. there on like a day and a half. And it's just ridiculous. Yeah. And it's, um, I think that Stranded makes for a good chance to go back even though originally I was quite sceptical because I always thought that Doom Coalition would happen, then Ravenous would happen and it's heightening up and then eventually we would see the death of Liv or Helen and then that will go into the Time War series. And then after Ravenous, when we've got stranded, I did kind of think, oh, it's a lull, kind of. We were building up and now we're back down again. Mm -hmm. um, but so far, I think it's definitely, it's promising, but I'm intrigued to see what they're going to do with it next. Mm. Because I can't see at the minute how it's going to span out for four box sets. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't really, I, I'm still trying to figure out what they, you know, what's the next series after that, if there is one, like, you know, uh, and will, you know, will one of them leave? I imagine, you know, Liv and Tanya will settle down. Mm. I don't know about you, but I'm uh, sure that that's a possibility. Oh, yeah. I think that'll happen. I think that... Helen, I think Helen's going to meet her demise in some way. I just think that she's one of those characters where as soon as she stepped aboard the TARDIS, she was like, yeah, she's not stepping back out of that box alive and wandering off again. You know, she just seems to be, I feel like that's what Big Finish are going to do. I think that we're going down another early days of Big Finish route with rather grim endings, not to mention a certain Earth Doctor companion. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Because I think, at least on the cover, um, the Brigadier's in it. Um, mm. That's going to be quite interesting. Um, and more of the curator. Um, I was quite, I am quite surprised that it, it wasn't, he, there wasn't a curator box set dedicated to the character. But I'm actually grateful and rather happy that he is cameoing. Is It's a cameo rather than mm. maybe his over. Because I, I think that's the thing, like... You still don't want, you don't want to like give it completely away. You still want to leave it ambiguous, but you but there's still you still want to know enough to kind of go off on and be feel satisfied as a whole. Because that whole moment in the fiftieth obviously was a great moment for fans. It's Tom Baker back on the big on the on the, on the TV screen and mm. on the big screen because it uh, Daily Doctor was in the cinema and. I, I suppose you know as uh, you know as amazing and like ah oh, crying everything it was great but uh, you I still was also you know trying to really put the pieces together of who he was and how how this all kind of came to be and I I'm sure that we'll get a few answers to that but hopefully not as many that completely gives the whole game away and ruins that very special moment. What I really like with them um, because he is the one thing that I always like to point out when it comes to audios is when they stick a character on the cover and then people buy it for that character 
Uh, I think a good example of that was um, Narvin in the last War Master box set, where he was credited as being Narvin's back. He's with the War Master again, but Narvin's only in it for like ten minutes. Oh, and he's only right. like a little tiny, tiny role, and because they probably filmed it with some other stuff. And what I like with the curator, and what I was really surprised with, is from what I can remember, he is in episode one. He almost yes. sees in the series. He introduces it. And the more he's kind of on screen, or the more he's within the scene, I suppose, he's um, the more ambiguous he gets. Mm. And he just kind of, it it does kind of reveal more mystery. And I think that, like, from the rest of the episodes of however many times he appears, he always needs to keep that role of being just in the background. And I think that possibly yeah. never meet the Eighth Doctor as well. Because mm. he can't. Because he can't have his mind wiped again. No. Yeah. No, and we've had like Paul McGann and Tom Baker together in like the end, so that's mm. that's all that's all good. Um, yeah, I, I suppose otherwise, I like the Tom Victorious trilogy, it's fun, it just showcases how great McGann can be. They're three completely different stories, um, and it's just great to hear a voice for Brian the Ood because as soon as I that was a thing in Tom Victorious. I just wanted to hear because Silas Carson mm. has done the Ood obviously for the TV series, and I was like, and I, I already kind of, obviously I knew what Ood sounded like from watching the show, but like how Silas Carson was going to play this particular Ood, uh, yeah, him and McGann, like that was that was quite a highlight. I must I, I must say it's, 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 it's great fun, and I think he you know Silas just like grabbed the script like he has really just it, it reveled in the kind of assassinness of this Ood who's really well dressed. I feel like Silas is the type of actor where you could literally listen to him reading out a shopping receipt and it would yes. be great. He's just so... There's something about the voice. and Every single Ood appearance I've seen so far or heard on Big Finish has been really good. Um, the Warmaster one is really good. And equally, it's, even though I'm still undecided of what I actually think of Time Lord Victorious, by far the best thing about He Kills Me, He Kills Me Not is Brian. That is the selling point. And I think that it's actually a shame because I know he's in one of the other. I think is it the one that's narrated by Jacob Dudman? Yes, the Minds of Magnox. Yeah, is Silas doing that as well? Or... I think it's just Jacob, um, but mm. they they sound eerily alike. See, I think it would be for Brian. From what I'm getting with his character, is they should have utilised the audio format more with him and had him in a yes. few more episodes because um, he's just so good. And he's the best thing, so they should have used that to its strength. I totally agree with that. Like, uh, the more Brian, the merrier. Um, I've enjoyed, like, you know, when I've re when I've read him in the, he's obviously because he features in the books and other things like that. Um, I look, I you get just, him on a coaster. Yeah, and, a and I, should, I think I'm sure a lot of people have done Titans, but uh, sorry, Customs, where they got that Temp Doctor Tuxedo figure, took Tenant's head off, and put a nude on it. I'm surprised they didn't do them, um, because the figurine collection have been doing Time Lord Victorious figures, haven't they? Mm. I'm surprised that we've not seen a two-pack yet that's the Tenth Doctor in his Gallifreyan garments, yeah. and then Brian the Ood. I think that is up and coming. Is I think it? that is I think that is on the I think that is on the timeline for next year, I think, yeah. Ah, oh, I thought it might be, because mm. it seems just so obvious. Yeah, but I, I, I hope character also... Maybe. I think it's quite easy for character to do. Just get that, to, yeah, as I say, Tuxedo 10, put a nude on it, like, you know. I'm very, I'm very so surprised really. that we didn't get repaints of the Bronze Daleks for Time Lord Victorious. I really mm. am. I thought they would have been involved. I really did. Um, but part of me is kind of glad that they're not, because in particular with the big finish sets last year, I think we've kind of seen enough of that sculpt of Bronze Dalek now for at least a couple of years. Hmm. And I, I did cover, I've covered this in my Time of Victorious one. I'm not quite sure which one's going to go out first. It might be this one, might be Time of Victorious. But um, I've got a Time of Victorious video, uh, either up or not. But uh, we've kind of said that what Nicholas Briggs has done, and I, I think this is for the audios, but also for the Dalek series, is like, obviously there's different Daleks in Time of Victorious, and he mm. does make them sound distinct. And particularly because with the audios, it's harder to tell which one's speaking. It is, it's definitely, it, it definitely, he definitely does a really good job where you can tell, oh, that Dalek is speaking and that, that you know, one, because they're all, they've all got different roles. There's like the strategist, the scientist, almost like the paradigms that we, we were going to have in the TV series. But like, now they've kind of done this. I, I quite like, I quite like 
So have you have you watched it? Have you done the Daleks TV series by any chance? Um, I've not. Uh, I've been too busy with uni. <laughs> um, it's, I'll, I'll admit I've not approached. I've listened to one time Odd Victorious, and that's it at the minute. I see. I'm hoping to go back. I'm thinking maybe in the future once everything's out, then I'll listen to it all in the proper mm. order. But what I like is um because I've heard a very similar thing online the way they differentiate and the different Dalek voices and that's something they do in the Time War stuff as well. Yeah. Um because in the Time War stuff we've had the likes of the Dalek Admiral in I think Time War One where it's like a Dalek that's under sea and doing all like uh, submarine stuff and uh, the War uh, War Doctor series as well. There's lots of mental Daleks within that. There's like I um the one that was released in figure form. I think it was that one within the story was mental and had like all sort of stuff appendages coming off him. And um, he was a crazy kind of Einstein-esque Dalek. And I think it's nice to have different voices in there. I think that Nicholas Briggs is definitely, he's extended out and done more exciting stuff, which is nice. Yeah, because sometimes with the classic series, there are sort of more than one Dalek voice actor. I suppose not always, but... Some of the time there's like Roy Skelton sometimes. I think Brian Miller did the Dalek voices at one time. And then there was like, they did get other people. And sometimes in the same story, you'd have, you know, more than one actor voicing them. But the fact that Nick Briggs was literally sort of going out all out and really finding a distinct voice for each of them. And for you as uh, as an audience member, whether you're listening or watching something to really get a feel that that Dalek is different and it's got different motivations and there's something different driving that Dalek compared to the rest. Yeah, it's very commendable to Nicholas Briggs to, you know, be one man doing many voices. Mm, definitely. So so overall, The Eighth Doctor, what, what would what would you say? How has he fared on Big Finish? Stranded, strong start. Eighth Doctor Time War, uh, Palindrome, really good two-parter, nice Davros exploration story. A lot of the thing with Time War series is if you're thinking about listening to it and you haven't as of yet, basically wait until it's all out and then wait until it's on sale, then get the bundle and then like binge listen it because um, the stories are very connected. And what I found was um, with the release of Time War 3, I went back and listened to 1 and 2 in quick succession. And there's a lot of ties that you kind of only acknowledge if you've only just listened to the previous box set and not mm. had that year apart. Um, so yeah, I recommend binge listening it when it's all done and out, definitely. Ooh, interesting. Very interesting. I, 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 I might I might give that a go. I, um, I think twenty I think 2021 is going to be like a really big year for Big Finish, but also just a great opportunity to to catch up on before. So the next category I've got is the fourth Doctor. Um, my, my the 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 one that I've been most looking forward to. So uh, this year we've had the fourth Doctor Adventure Series Nine. This was the, with the E Space guy, so that's really cool. Uh, Adric and Romana too. Shadow of the Sun, the first out of time. Uh, I think I could I could bundle it in. Ooh, I know it's yeah. a, te- a, te- a technical. It's I think it is the tenth Doctor Adventure because okay. it is his theme music and everything. But I thought I put that in there anyway. And then genetics of the Daleks. And I believe that, I think that is it for the fourth Doctor at least. Um, so how, what about Tom Baker on Big Finish this year? Out of time. That's what I'm going to dedicate my yeah. time to. Um, yeah, go for it. Out of time, really good. Um, it's one of those stories where if you are looking to get into audio, then it's 10 quid. And I think that it's one of those stories that it could have very easily just been a regular multi-doctor story but it gets these doctors from a particular point within their time stream and goes right how can we put them together how can we develop the characters that whole concept of them both dealing with leaving someone behind and then i think that's it's just a nice way to it's a nice theme that underpins the story the actual sciencey stuff is all right it's kind of like it falls into new series doctor who kind of it's the same format of the story itself and the sciencey things aren't the most exciting thing about it. It's the characters that drive it forward, definitely. Oh, and the yeah. references at the end to Sarah, obviously. Oh, of course, absolutely. Yeah, no, I think this is a really well-written story. Um, I was, you know, it was a big shock when it was announced. I think for a lot of people, and I think it, obviously it's that crossover that a lot of people sort of wanted it's the most popular classic Doctor and one of the most popular modern Doctor coming together in a story with the most popular villain, the Daleks. So obviously this this was, you know, met with very high anticipation and what it was going to be like. And it turned out, a you know, absolutely fantastic story. 
Uh, the interactions between the two are really nice. I like the fact that the tenth Doctor called himself John Tyler. Um, I think that was that was quite a nice moment. And there, there was some like uh, I think the fourth Doctor sort of looking at his um, almost sort of looking at tenth Doctor with raised eyebrows sort of what he will eventually become and everything. Like that's done like so well. And Tom Baker gets some excellent moments of dialogue with like Michelangelo and everything like that. Yeah, no, this is an, it was an absolute like treat to listen to and um both great and yeah uh i like that kind of i like the bit at the end sort of you know giving the giving them the advice and of course the lovely mention of sarah jane and i know for the fourth doctor it takes place between the deadly assassin and the face of evil because mm. um i think the te i think there was a line of the tenth doctor says oh yeah congratulations mr president because that had you know that was the venture that happened for the fourth doctor before that that was like really cool and then even the tenth doctor foreshadowing romana and k9 you'll settle down with mm. a time lady and a dog i was like yeah no, that was a, it was genuinely highlight. I think uh, for fans of either Doctor or both, uh, yeah, no, this is absolutely true. And of course, it's the first of three. Um, so, I must admit, when they announced David for all of them, I was a bit, oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. Because I, I was honestly expecting another David Bradley with another classic series Doctor, I was expecting yeah. that. But I don't know what to think about David being across the whole board, all three stories. I just know that I'm very much looking forward to the 2022 yes. six and ten, uh, ten one, definitely. Because <laughs> they're fighting the Weeping Angels in that one, aren't we? And then there's the Fifth Doctor and the Cybermen next year. Mm. If I remember, yeah. So, yeah, no, I'm curious. And I suppose it, it's, I, uh, I hope they do keep that kind of specialness about it, because it felt very special with the first one. And I suppose, you know, I'm sure with the next, but you also don't want to sort of, lose that what made sort of the first one special either uh, and i'm sure that will that will be the case and that that, that they'll work their way but uh, i really i think for a surprise by shadow of the sun which is sort of a lockdown special as it were i think it was recorded yeah. in lockdown and i think it was possibly going to be a story for an upcoming fourth doctor set but they decided to do it as a little special now and that was really cool and you know i bought it because it felt standalone and you know i like the fourth doctor leading canine the kind of season 15 crew as it were and yeah i think shadow of the sun will be one of those releases in the future where it basically it was one of those stories where it was of the time it was of the moment we've just entered this horrible situation let's make it better we've made this go out and enjoy it and i think that that in the future might be something that big finish will sort of take themselves up upon and i think that we might start seeing random one hour releases because there's just something about it that's so nice to be able to go you want to get into big finish here's a fourth doctor story that you don't need to know anything beforehand go and enjoy it it's only one hour long it's very easy to follow it's fun and it just it's doctor who you know it's nice doctor who yeah absolutely yeah i i think that that could definitely be something that big finish take on in the future and uh yeah i think if it leads to like really cool standalone stuff that you know maybe for people who uh um it's harder for them to get into like box set stuff if you just have this kind of one like shadow of the sun you, you pick it up and you listen to it you it's a it's a great doctor story where you don't feel like as you said that sort of day and a half that day and a half worth of like catch up is like you know you don't need to do that you you pop that straight in so it, it was it was great for that as well and um robert valentine did a great job with the story and the script i loved it um mm. and genetics of the daleks was really cool uh very sort of of the movie alien um that was it, it's a prequel to the dalek escape room as part of the time of victoria's event um and yeah no, that was cool as well have you listened to the fourth doctor adventures series nine i have although it feels like 10 years ago by this point <laughs> it's i couldn't tell i know that adric adric's in it isn't he yes yeah, is the season 18 crew which which was quite interesting for me i suppose like it's a it's quite nice to uh go back to that to that tardis crew because i don't i don't think they've really no they haven't well obviously we've had the fourth doctor romana but i don't think we've ever mm. had those two plus adric um because I know Adric's a paper that he's done stuff with the Fifth Doctor in Big Finish before. Mm. I think, yeah, I know we've had Mary Tam, Romana, Louise Jameson, um, and Kelso. I don't think um, 
We've had ones within season eighteen. I can remember that. Yes, but just not yeah. the Adric uh, ones. Yeah. No, I think so. I think it would have been obviously before. The, I suppose before the East Space sort of trilogy. I suppose uh, before because obviously his full circle starts and that's when Adric sort of mm. starts to become part of the crew. It's that if you're a fan of the era, I think you'll like it. But I can't yeah, remember I, much else. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say season 18 is quite underrated and, you know, it, it, I, I love State of Decay. That's a, that's a cracking story. And I I think it would be quite interesting to hear more of them as it was it's sort of later in that Doctor's tenure. And I think you'll get a kind of different fourth Doctor than you would kind of normally mm. really um it's it, that was even was very was the beginning of the J and T and the series moving more to that sort of scientific direction with Christopher H Bidmead and may, maybe the stories kind of reflect more the tone and sort of style of that season I'm I'm sure but yeah I I was I felt quite intrigued I, I might that might be something I'd pick up but yeah I'm very much looking forward to is it Return of the Cybermen Yes, I'm very looking forward to see what that, what they do with that, and it'll be interesting to see um, the alternative cast for the season twelve TARDIS team as well, because it's kind of one of those novelties where it's a story that exists, however, it's difficult to put it into the canon. <laughs> yeah, it's, I say it's an alternative to Revenge of the Cybermen. Um, mm. So I don't I don't know whether they'll whether that would kind of be a thing, it'll start with them spinning around in space because that's how Genesis ends and Revenge of the Cybermen begins. So um, it could, yeah. So no, I'm, I'm really intrigued about that. And they've cast Sadie Miller in the, in an upcoming third Doctor box set as well yeah. with Trim, Tim Trelaw. So that's quite interesting. And I think Daisy, Daisy Ashford, who I know has sort of done it, Liz, sure, before, is also in that. So it's sort of, you know, with the third Doctor stuff, it would be exploring that the crews that haven't had as much in the terms of sort of extended adventures. The um the third Doctor ones are I think probably one of the only ongoing current Big Finish series that I've literally not even touched. Because it's just one of those ones where I've not gone into it yet. Now I would like to at some point, um especially because I know there was the third Doctor and Cyberman one a year or so back, which intrigues mm. me. Um and I think Katie Manning as well. I just want to hear more Katie because Katie's great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I've listened because Tim Trudeau pops up in odd little things. Like I heard him. Actually, I suppose the first proper thing I heard of him because he pops up in Legacy of Time. Yeah. Uh, in the the Joe Grant slash Unit one. So, um, and I from what I've heard, it, it's quite good. And I think uh, you can kind of listen to it. You can get into my say. Yeah, this is. The third Doctor, mm. um, not quite saying it's not John Pertwee, but I, you know I don't think I don't I don't think the immersion's completely gone as well. I imagine that within if Big Finish, which they probably will, but if Big Finish maintain the license over the next ten years, because I believe it runs out I think in three or so years' time, whenever hopefully it gets extended. I think that within the next period of 10 years, we're most definitely going to see um, the new adventures of the likes of the first, like how we're seeing with David Bradley, but also the second and third Doctors, like proper full cast box sets. I think mm -hmm. that will probably happen at some point. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be very interesting. Uh, any any uh, sort of overall on the, uh, the fourth Doctor? He's good. It's Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. So I can't say anything bad. Of course, literally, this fandom will come after me with sticks. <laughs> it's yeah. Tom. It, it's Tom, and yeah, I know he's brilliant. And I love seeing the behind this. There's like big finish, but like a uh, of him recording like during lockdown, and the fact that he's still obviously recording, but also sometimes I think he does give notes. He does have suggestions of how he wants to play mm. the Doctor. So the fact that Tom's very still actively involved in that side of things, it, it's great, and. Um, like um yeah here's to here's to just more um i'm just i'm I'm on board for that for the next category i've just bundled the modern series stuff really um all of it all, uh, all the other stuff <laughs> yeah so there's i think the seventh series of the diary of river song uh the 12th doctor chronicles uh gallifrey time war three donna noble kidnapped the fourth volume of the first doctor adventures the third volume of the lives of captain jack 
the third heritage volume of the Paternoster Gang Misty Series 2. And I think you'll like this one. The fourth heritage box set of the Paternoster Gang and the Tenth Doctor and River Song. Is that all we've had this year? God, they've been a bit I quiet. So. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've sort of put, compiled the list and um, yeah, I, I you know, those are the ones that either I've written down or at least come to mind. Let's, let's, let, yeah, I feel I feel like that's there's probably been like one that kind of cover, covers most of the months at least of the year. So yeah, any, got anything. one at least coming out every five minutes, you know. Every five minutes, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. By far the, I, I, funnily enough, I've not listened to Paternoster Four yet. Uh, with Jago, like, well, with Jago, um, because I've heard that basically the entire series is connected, and I listened to the first two. And then I went, well, I started getting busy uh, around when the third one came out. So I've got like a backlog there with them. But the thing that I've realised with Pat and Oster is I don't think I'm ever going to be able to fully adore it. No doubt some will, but I just can't because to me it will never replace what originally was there before. Yeah. With Joe going right foot. And I think that they, they cater to two very, very different audiences. And it's clear that the paternoster gang series is probably suited which is very rare but suited for a younger big finish listener yeah no i can totally see why you'd say that because the paternoster gang i suppose since they began what's it 2011 2012 um those guys that obviously a lot of people like well they're gonna get a spin-off you know mm. they, they're, they're appearing it a lot um the comedy's there Obviously, I think it'd be quite manic for both Neve McIntosh and Dan Starkey with all the makeup and everything. And I suppose maybe uh, the budget as well to pull off Victorian London mm. every, you know, every week, however many, many episodes they do. Um, obviously, now this is their opportunity to sort of have that kind of series. So it, it's quite interesting, you know, coming into it now, you know, it, it's sort of been a thing fans have wanted and, that, and then you finally got it and I suppose you know they're sort of doing what they probably would have done really like I, I I kind of imagine this being what they would have eventually done had they had a, a TV series and um, I think the title of the uh, the first one the fourth one I think it is called Merry Christmas Mr Jago which automatically just put a massive smile on my face um, I've not listened to it either because as uh, I think I've only listened to a bit of the first one so I, I'm I'm definitely more behind you because you listened to the first two, but uh, yeah, no, I'm really intrigued. I because um, they've crossed over before with Jago, Lightfoot, and Strax. Yes. Um, that mm. that's quite fun. And then they've crossed over with obviously with Pl- Plus Vastra and Jenny in that as well. So um, yeah, no, I, I it was it's they they it's a series that's very much intrigued me, and I'm sure like the writers and you know they're like oh you know these characters are quite, you know, beloved from that, from that, uh, that Smith Capaldi era at the time. And here's them finally getting a chance to sort of, you know, carry on their adventures. Yeah, definitely. There's, um, it's nice to see that they aren't going, well, I said a few months ago to someone, it's nice to see that they're kind of being more precise and not releasing random box sets here and there. And I think literally two hours later, they announced the second box set of Lady Christina. And I thought, ah. Yeah. And it's um, it's, it, well, it's always about what sells. And to me, is if they're doing a second box set of Lady Christina, that must mean it's sold. So... You know, because they wouldn't be making something at the end of the day that hasn't sold. And I think that some of the ones that I have done in the past have um, not worked as well. I mean, I personally decide what ones I'm going to review, some of which um, depend entirely on how much time I have uh, at that period. Um, But I think overall this year, Don and Orbel, that was a decent one. Um, It was fun. Um, Again, it was like just a boost really it's one of those ones that you kind of listen to if you like the era uh Gallifrey time war i fell behind on i have the box set somewhere um and it's just sat waiting for me to listen to which i really need to get around to that because it's now nearly a whole year and the next one comes out in i think february um is that the one with richard armitage yeah my... it is it is yeah it's gonna me... be interesting yeah, me and Philip had a joke. Uh, well, we were teasing about uh, the amount of ras- the amount of rassalons we've had so far. So we've had him, we've had Timothy Dalton, we've had Donald Supter. I was like, so when are we getting a multi rassalon story? 
And when are we going to get someone in to do the impression of the, the voice from the five doctors? This is the game of Rassilon. Just get the them in. The Rassilons. The James, Rassilon get James Bond back. Yeah, Donald <laughs> Sumter. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be good. It's. I think the. Well, for that though, for class, I'm. I'm looking over my um, shoulder. At any other? There's that one. Uh, Tenth Doctor River Song. That's kind of. Again, it's very much. If you like the characters, um, say if you like the Tenth Doctor, if you like River Song, then it's safe buying their series because you will always get something from it. Same with the Diary of River Song. Personally, I wasn't much of a fan of the character within the TV show. I've started to like her a bit more on Big Finish as she's interacted with some of the classic series Doctors. Mm. And the only time that I kind of dip into that series is when there's something that directly interests me. So right. before when Derek Jacobi appeared in it and they had the master stories, like that's something that I thought, oh, that'll be interesting. I'll dip in. It didn't matter that I hadn't seen anything else from that um, from that series. So it's um, very much... The thing about the new series box set is you can cherry pick. I think that is good. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, I So there was the second series of Missy that came mm. out. And there's something in it that I'm not quite sure if I should say. But I'm sure it's maybe probably been already sort of floating around the internet already. Is it the thing that begins with L? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. In episode one. Yeah, episode yeah. Mm. Yeah. The Missy series is... I never reviewed the second one. I started listening to it, and I think, again, time kind of stopped that review from happening. Um, but the the thing I always try with the Missy series is I try and remember that it's different to all of the other Masters, and it's going to be very interesting to see the style of um, Master exclamation mark next year with um, Eric Roberts mm. because each series has had its own theme and the War Master is flawless in my opinion but Missy is still there's some fun stories in there but I feel like they could be doing a lot more I want purpose from the box sets like it just seems to be at the minute lots of random adventures like I would love one to take place directly after the events of World Enough and Time when she's just finished regenerating establishing where the hell her TARDIS is because one minute she has it the next she doesn't it's just there's lots of plot holes that they don't seem to want to fill up with Missy and Big Finish avoiding plot holes and plot lines it's rather odd yeah, um, I know they probably won't do this, but I think there's still some contention around um, where Dewan is coming. Where does he fit into the picture in terms of his master? Like some people say, well, actually, it's before Missy because obviously the, the the redemption thing. Or some people say, no, actually, he's definitely after that. Like I don't, I don't. Big Fish. There might be a sly way to maybe. Uh, do that or whether that is going to be a thing that the TV series actually does but mm. I suppose it never really when Dewan was revealed at the master at the end of Spyfall I suppose it you know I was kind of like oh my god it's the master and then I suppose it never really crossed my brain I was like well wait wait where's he from <laughs> you, know, how, where, in, yeah, you know I mean technically uh, yeah. he's um, there was so many incarnations before Delgado yeah could he be? I can't remember the exact details of Spyfall. Is he a pre? Is it like? Is like pre Hartnell? Like, is he a pre Delgado master? <laughs> God, imagine that you've already had the fandom screaming over Ruth, and now this one. Goes... <laughs> yeah. So, by the way, that one's before that one, and we don't mention Defrayus. No. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, any anything? Any other? Well, actually, I suppose right now. Um. Any sort of further highlights from Big Finish from this year that you can remember? I've got two, actually. Um, this is from across the board, because I was looking back before doing this, what ones I've actually reviewed, because 2020 has been that much of a mind boggle. I couldn't actually remember what was came out this year. And probably a spoiler for when I eventually do my top 10 for this year. Don't know when that's happening. It will happen eventually. Tropical Beach Sands and Relaxing Seascapes for by Tim Foley from Torchwood. It is um, starring Sir Michael Palin as Sir Michael Palin. It's just perfection. It's I can't say anything else. It kind of takes mm. the um, theme of a 
motivational, you are important, you are loved kind of thing. And it's that throughout the whole story. It's experimental and it's, um, as said in the review, which looking back was probably quite cringy, it's not listening to an audio drama, it's an experience, which I think that's what you get from that story. So I do definitely recommend that one. Um, Torchwood Soho Parasite as well. Um, if you like more obscure Torchwood, that's quite a lot of fun. Lot got lots of personality. Uh, the Sixth Doctor and Perry. Uh, that one's if you like the era again. It's a good development of the relationship between the Sixth Doctor and Perry. And I imagine that when we see the end of the monthly range, this is probably what Big Finish is going to start to look like a lot more. Um, just these big four-part box sets, and then. Probably one final mention, Torchwood Dissected as well, starring Free Marajima, which I constantly forget actually exists, because it's like, oh yeah, Martha's done a big finish. It's like, we seem to, we seem to all forget, including myself, but yeah, that one. Um, I imagine it won't be the last we'll see of Martha. I think that the next 10th Doctor volume of stories, if they continue the volume format, will probably be set within series three, I hope. Um, but yeah, I recommend that one again, but Obviously, Torchwood has sweary adult things in, so only listen to that one if you're above the age of whatever. <laughs> mm. I was going to cover Torchwood, but I think we've kind of covered at least the the, bit, the the main ones, like the one with Sir Michael Palin and the one with Free Madman. Like you know, that's it. I I I've not listened to any Torchwood this year either, so I'm I I wouldn't be. I, there's like so many sort of more monthly stuff. I think didn't that John Hart box set come out this year, or was it maybe last year? Um. The John Hurt. Oh, it's John Hart. John Hart. John. John oh, Hurt. I, thought was, I thought you were thinking John Hurt. Um, I, John no, Hart. I was, yeah, Sins, I was gonna, I Sins of that. Captain John. There that, we go. There we are. That's the one. The, yeah, I keep forgetting about that one. Um, I've heard it. I've heard it's good. Possibly, I imagine, because I know they did. Um, I've literally got a pile of Torchwood just off camera for context for people who are watching. And um, recently, I did pick up the the Death of Captain Jack. Um, ah, which is yes. kind of a mini... It stars quite a lot of people, actually, for a monthly range. Um, I think it's kind of one of those ones that they recorded whilst recording all of the others to kind of drag people in from different stories. But I imagine if you like that one, then you probably like The Sins of Captain John as well. Mm. I'm probably just going to keep calling him James Masters. I know that's the actor, but, you know, uh, that's probably the... Me as well. Yeah, it's probably the easy way to, to, to say it. Um... The one from Buffy. The one from Buffy that 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 came on that that was on the series that one time, yeah. I don't know if there's really any any other sort of further things that has been sort of big fish twenty twenty. I suppose really, let let's do like a look forward into twenty twenty one. Um, because we've got because I suppose this year gave us announcements for stuff in twenty twenty one, even yeah. stuff in twenty twenty two. Um, if, if oh, you know, if that, if that, if, that, if we come across that, that, that's cool. Obviously, the big, obviously, I think the big news for this year, going into next year, is that Eccleston is going to be reprising yeah. his role as the Ninth Doctor. Just um, that little, you know, that Doctor that nobody's excited about at all. No, and he's recorded the first one, I believe. Like, yeah, it's a, it, it has been made out there and official. I'm looking forward to it. Surf to surf. It's. I'm looking forward to see what they do. I want to know who he's paired with. Um, I think that we're going to have... Um, at this point, I don't think we're going to get a Barman story between them, as much as I would love one. Um, I feel like, to be honest, even the likelihood at this point of having Billy Piper alongside him seems quite slim. Um, all I do want is a Cyberman story between mm. them, preferably classic Cybermen, maybe even Van Staten. That would be quite cool, like that revenge design. Uh, to kind of hark back to that and um maybe the format as well I i've mentioned this on twitter and it's such a small little thing but i just want them to use at the end of each story i want them to act like it's a whole new series and then at the end of an episode we'll get a next time trailer for the next one i think that would be really cool um i just hope that they spend time on it and really make it perfect because if they do it'll probably be the next Jubilee and the next The Holy Terror. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I just find it great news that Chris is, obviously Chris is coming back, but then 
you hear you hear the voice you hear his inflections because it's it's all in his voice as great as you'd see him on a comic on now and again or you read the, that book or you know he in other media you know it's just great to sort of have chris inject life back into the character again and i think that's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting uh i think it'll be i suppose it'll be quite refreshing hearing the ninth doctor in a different kind of light if he's not paired with anyone from series one i suppose it maybe it doesn't like conflict with anything that happens during because uh, I think for lots of people, series one was that sacred experience mm. that is like, don't touch it, don't like add all, don't add or complicate anything, it's perfect as it is. So maybe for those guys, they're like, you know, yeah, you know, maybe, but um, no, I, as I say, it'd still be a treat to hear. Um, if I was in Big Finish's shoes, I would be really not gutted, but. I'd kind of look back, because I have done previous Ninth Doctor Chronicles stories, that infamous box set with Nicholas Briggs. Yes. Along with a few short trips. And I'm, from what I'm gathering, I've not listened to them, but I think it's um, Battle Scar, something like that, um, her own bootstraps, all of those stories all cover the stuff that we got to see within Clive's shed. Yes. And it's like, looking back, I do wonder if Big Finish and our thinking by this point God, why did we do that? Because I think it's having an episode um, that has, say, Jeff K and um, 60s, I think that would be cool. And even mm. the Night Doctor on the Titanic as well. I think that Ooh. would be... And the Adams Family. No, is it Adams Family? No, Daniel's that, Family. It, Daniel's Family. <laughs> so actually having the Daniel's Family on a big finish would be... Yes. No, I... No, do you know what? Yes, I, I, I absolutely want that, you know. And they've brought back Mark Benson on Big Finish, which is great. They did. He was in the Rose Tyler box set, I believe, that Dimension Canon one they released, I think, probably two years ago now, two, maybe two, maybe three years ago, mm. which, yeah, that, that sounded interesting. So if he pops up in The Ninth Doctor, I don't know how, um, saying that he was alive all this time, because I know that in for Harriet Jones, people say that she died in the Star of Journey's End. Then in a book, they kind of, like, React content like she fell through the floor, jumped off onto like a, a mattress or something, and then landed on a motorbike or something. Um, so retcon uh, Clive's death because he didn't die. He deflected it, so deflected the shot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. The one other thing that I'm looking forward to next year is probably masterful. And I say that oh, and killing time as well with the war ma- uh, with the war master. Because um, Masterful seems exciting, it will be interesting to see all them together, and Alex McQueen as well, it's great to see him back, because I was starting oh, yes. to get worried that he was never going to come back again. Um, I just look forward to, because the thing with this new format, and one of the benefits from what I understand, is it's actually going to be cheaper for people to experience more Big Finish, because the main range is now no longer there. It's going to mean presumably paying £25 for a whole four-hour box set, so it's hopefully going to mean that more money, well, for a fan, more money can be spent on different areas, which would be quite yeah. good. But I imagine that it will take a few months or maybe even the first year for it to fully get going. Uh, yeah, no, I, that that's a good point, actually. Yeah, I suppose it could be. And for this box, I suppose it's John Sims' debut for his master on Big Finish. So that will be interesting. And he's pretty much starting, he's gone right the deep end where he's pretty much just starting in the story with all the surviving actors that have played the master. That's that's quite a... So I don't know whether they'll do any more of his master going forward, but I think now that they have got him, I suppose it opens the possibility at least. Hmm. I do wonder if, because um, obviously it's the big year of the Master, and we've already seen a few bits of merchandise being released to celebrate his anniversary. Um, so I do wonder if maybe the next series of Doctor Who had, for Geordie's era at least, may even have that in mind, and maybe the Timeless Children thing may be linking into the Master's anniversary in some way mm. as well. So it'll we're, be interesting to see. Yeah, we're getting his debut season on Blu-ray. I'm very excited about that. Um, and Dewan watching Delgado, that's quite that's quite a treat, I think, in it in itself. So yeah, I think yeah, it'll be, it'll be quite eventful, I suppose. Like the big finish, the the Blu-ray. Yeah, I, I think you know that'd be a quite a celebration. It's a celebration because you could you could do an anniversary for everything. You could do uh, um, I think well, technically this year at the beginning of this year it was 50 years since John Pertwee 
started as the Doctor, and um, you could, I think there was like 50 Years of the Simon and stuff like that. There's uh, many anniversaries you could do for like just various, you know, Wasn't events. Some Tarns as well recently. Yeah, I think it was 45 ish, 46 ish years, I think, since mm. the Time Warrior. Um, I can't believe maybe in a few years' time, it's probably going to be 50 years since Tom started. God. That's when I bring out the birthday cake and everything uh, for that. Um, you'll be glorious. But yeah. Also, we got Dalek Universe, I suppose, next yeah, year indeed. as well. It'll be interesting um, to see what hype there is for David Tennant, because a lot of people are saying the market's oversaturated with him at the minute. It's be interesting to see what happens with that. I look forward to the prequel, at least, or, uh, which has got like a death to the Daleks thing. I think Bilal's on the cover. I went, no way. No way. Are they? Are they? Are they bringing, bringing back him back? Imagine like, that. Um, I suppose it'll be set on X long, and it's the fourth Doctor and Leela and K9. I'd actually love for the, I don't know what the stories would entail, but just Balal the series. Yeah. I can't believe they have a series called I Alpha Centauri. Or like a Peladon, like stuff on Peladon. Um, Yasin Churchman came back for that little bit in Empress of Mars. Which is great. Like one of the best things that happened within the show. <laughs> yes. I I was like from my fist in the air, like, yes. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Like I, and it was kept a surprise. That, that's the thing with some surprises. Like, oh, if, um you find out before um John Sim coming back in the World Enough Time and everything like that. But that was like nope. Had no clue. And I So was, do you think Mark Gates just sat down and was like, Stephen, I've got an idea. It's like, yeah, what's your idea? It's like, half a century. It's like, no. Yeah, like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Do you know what? I don't know if I had a louder reaction to that than when Jack came back, <laughs> which is so bad. But I think maybe... Each to I, their own. I know. So what do you prefer? The Alpha Centauri or Jack? It's like, well, which one are you more inclined to? But um, yeah. Ah, oh, I'm. Do you know what I'm picturing? Uh, future, what fugitive, fugitive of the doom? That scene where he's like, "Oh, you missed me, right?" But imagining different companions, and then the one I came across was K9. So the me, one I came master. across was Alpha. He Centauri. just like slides on the floor towards Graham, <laughs> just like hello. <laughs> so I've got my legs back. I'm not the one from that horrible Australian series. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, have you seen Mad Quirk yet? I certainly haven't. <laughs> Do you know, okay, this, this, this is just for fun, and I, I, I don't mind going off topic for a bit. If you were to replace Jack with another companion in that scene where he, he, he arrives in the spaceship and goes up to Graham, who would hmm. you put instead of Jack? Do you know what I'm picturing it in my head now? And I think this works so well. Frobisher. Yep. Yeah. Just so with a panel that he turns around and goes... You miss me, Dark? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the beautiful thing is, anybody who hasn't listened to the Holy Terror will be like... Yeah. So, the hell is so why is there a penguin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. mm. Then it'll just come up at the end, like, when the title's real, it's like, and for more adventures with Frobisher the Penguin, why not check out Big Finish? <laughs> That'd be great. Chameleon would be fun. Um... But using the same chameleon from the 80s. Like, don't actually make it any more modern. Just use the same one. <laughs> With the weird eyes. The possibilities are endless. But um, this is not to take away the excitement that Jack came back this year. But, you know, I, said, I, I was just, like, thinking, how fun would it be if instead of Jack, it would be X. Like, whoever, whoever, really. So if it was a Drashig that like, suddenly, like, but not, like, not even from the TV show, just the puppet. The <laughs> yeah, many possibilities. So, yeah. Last law. Ooh, interesting. Can, well, what's that? Can, Granny can, Connolly. Can Tim Trelaw just burst through in Bessie? Can that be a thing? So but don't run over Graham. It's like, just, he like, charges through. It's like, oh. Where are I? Oh, right, under the... <laughs> so, where are we? We're in the spare room of the big Finnish officers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. 
But yeah, 2021 is looking quite exciting. Packed. And Pat, yeah. Many money, I suppose always. many monies will be spent, many hours will be spent listening to many different audio dramas from many different actors from many different corners of Doctor Who, whether it be classic, whether it be modern, whether it be Torchwood, whether um, we'll get I. I. for Centauri, please. I'll write it. I'll, um, you know. I'll star in it. I'll direct it. I'll produce it. I'll do yeah. the casting. <laughs> Which is funny. With the, I was thinking Pendulum series, but because when Curse of Pendulum went out, I think that we just joined the European Union. Mm. And now we've left, or we're leaving, oh, well, or, whatever's going on, or whatever's going on with Brexit. I was like, well, I think Jodie Whittaker's due a trip to Peladon, I think, to sort something out. <laughs> she'll just, she must well do the scene of like, she'll be there watching the daily briefings on BBC One. And she just goes, God, I need a break. Turns <laughs> off the TV, hops in the top, goes to Peladon, and the whole place is on flames. Like, <laughs> great. <laughs> So it's, I, it would be no. It's like the ending of Spyfall Part Two, but she wrote out uh, Peladon's like, oh Gadafrey, and now Peladon, like. I'm just imagining the government daily briefings but on Peladon, <laughs> with like Lord what's his name, like the Ice Warrior, mm. Centurion, oh, yeah, Agador, yeah. they're growling. Agador. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Because if you haven't seen too much of a hairy man trying to make his way around science this year, why not go to Peladon? Yep, that's just where my mind is most of the time. If it's not on here in 20, uh, 2020, it's at Peladon. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any sort of highlights that are non-big finish in terms of Doctor Who? Like the stuff that we've got that, you know, have come out? I'm going to need to look around. Um... I can already see like the the Daleks. I suppose that's got the uh, Mechanos. Yeah, one. Mechanos definitely. Um, don't quite know what else. It's been an unusual year for merchandise. Um, it's been nice to see lots of big fin and up uh, B and M sets. Um, although sometimes I do question if maybe they're getting a bit too excited. Um, what's it? Terror of the Zygons. Tam O'Shanter. Tom. Uh, he's quite Ooh, good. Yeah. I've been very much enjoying the steel books, um, getting them. Um, even though I've not really been watching them, it's just been nice to get new artwork. Um, yeah. And the record series as well, the um, original soundtracks. I really loved the Massacre yeah. Record Store Day release. Um, other than that, it's um, I think we've considering we're in a global pandemic, we've got a fair amount of merch. Yeah, and I would say merch and also just content. Like I like the mini sods released during the Doctor Who lockdowns, giving sort of sequels or prequels to stories we sort of come to know and love. Um, the collection content, um, like we've got, I think we had like twenty six and fourteen this year. Both had some really good stuff to mm. just enjoy. Um, I, I, I must I, admit, I, over the last few months, I have really missed not having the Blu-rays because by mm. now we will probably have another three. Maybe even we would have definitely had two with probably the third on the way. Mm. You know, so it's, uh, I'm just looking up at them now and I do really miss getting them and like having them because, you know, it's it's a nice way to look back and binge watch a whole era. And, you know, mm. with so much extra new stuff, um, like I'm looking forward to the Damons, uh, them going to Devil's End because that's a great location. Um, and the behind the sofas, like Dewar watching Delgado is like going to be quite really fascinating. And um, like, yeah, um, I really like the trailer as well that they did with uh, Joe and Clifford. Uh, mm. I think that should big finish. That's another series. That's I another series feeling. they could do. I have a good feeling about that. I do think it's going to happen eventually. Because mm, is Pete Mc. Tig or Teague, I don't, I, I don't know which way I go about it. Who wrote Kablam and Practice? Who have written that stuff, and they're great. And even the A stuff, it's sort of the stuffy stuff you do see for the Blu-ray trailers. You're like, yep, yeah, that's that's a spin-off. That's a spin-off. To Javanka Airlines, that's a spin-off. Um, <laughs> yeah. Watch it. Tardis Wiki is on flames. So like, what do we do? How do we canonize all this? Yeah, no. Pete Pete McTeague is kind of like you know he's a genius in that way because he's just like writing all this mini like material for the Blu-rays as like promotional stuff. But then you know it's kind of like well 
if this ever gets a series, maybe you know, he he could be like, on board to like show run or write or what have you, like you Fury know Fury from the Deep as well. I've just remembered that's a worthy mention. Fury yes. From the deep. Yeah. Mm. And then the, we had earlier in the year the faceless ones. Um yeah. My I one thought... hope for the missing series is obviously we're getting abominable. No. I wish we were getting abominable. We're getting Web of Fear next year. Yes. Which um, I mean, I'm looking forward to. It'll be nice to see that episode animated. Um, but I, I just hope I want to see a Hartnell. I really do. Me too. I just want a Hartnell because as much as I do love seeing the Patrick shelf getting bigger, I just I want a Hartnell story. I want some Hartnell stuff. I've certainly missed him. Um, into because I think maybe the last one that got animated might have been the final part of the Tenth Planet. Mm, I don't think probably. we've had any since. I don't know whether that came first or if Reign of Terror did, but they came out, I think, around the same time. I think I want to say Reign of Terror came out 2013. I don't yeah, know that's... why. And then yeah. I feel like that came out at the end. Tenth Planet came out near Christmas, I think. I think that sounds right. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think they were done by the same studio and released around the same time. So. And I'm considering that all the other ones that have done the Doctor Who animations normally meet a grim end. So the other, the current ones are sticking in well. So keep going, guys. Yeah. It seems to be a cursed thing at the minute, honestly. Mm. So, yeah, I think that practically, I think we've covered anything. Any final words or thoughts in terms of Doctor uh, Who in 2020? Mm-hmm. It's been, yeah, I think the one thing it's highlighted is that we're in difficult times, but still stuff is going on. You know, there's always stuff to go and enjoy. There's always audio dramas to listen to. There's always books to read. Time Lord Victorious to try and get your head round and plot a graph over. You know, there's always something. I think that's the variety. And even if you don't like experiencing audios and books, there's action figures and the figurine collection and pudsy bears. That I've definitely not pre-ordered for next year. <laughs> you know, and everything else. And like it's just it's good. There's lots of stuff out there to enjoy. And I recommend being as open as possible when it comes to whatever you purchase. Oh, and Big oh. Chief Colin as well getting announced as well. <laughs> yeah, we had a peak. I don't know if I could like add any I think you've summed it up pretty well. It's like that's just left me to say Yeah. No, I've, I've, I felt I've, I feel like spoiled, which is probably why the genesis of this sort of little series, just trying to cover as much as I possibly can. And even then, like, there'll still be like the odd thing. Oh, but you didn't cover this. And they're like, ah, it's still good, though, probably. Um, yeah, it's always I... good. Yeah, it's always so... good to have stuff to uncover. Mm. And here's to 2021. Here, here we go. So, yeah, that's it. Strap Thank you, guys. In, guys. <laughs> Drop ourselves in. Yes, indeed. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Yeah, I hope to see you guys very soon in the next video, whatever that may be. It's goodbye from me. And bye from me. (laughs) Subscribe to the host productions. You won't regret it. Really, you won't. It's, It's a great channel. Go subscribe. Bye bye.